All right, let's talk about torque. Uh, torque is the rotational analog of forces. So by the end of our unit, uh, there are some interesting questions that hopefully you can answer. Uh, one of them would be, why does the earth spin? Why are door handles near the outside edge? What's the difference between a cedar seesaw and a teeter-totter? All of these things kind of come out of rotational motion. Uh, and we're going to answer some of them today and, and pay attention and see if you can answer the other ones as we get further into this unit. Uh, so the, the first thing that we're going to look at as we're trying to figure out torque is realizing that torque is how we spin things in the same way that forces are how we get things to move. Uh, so I'm going to look at a couple different quick examples. The first one is uh, this one right here. We'll call this one example one. Looking at example one, if I have a, a, a bolt or a nut that I'm trying to get loose, and I have a big wrench attached to it, and I start pushing on it, what's going to do the best job at getting this loose? Uh, would it be the big force, F1, F2, or the smallest force, F3? The answer is pretty obvious. Obviously, if I apply a bigger force, I will be able to get this thing loose uh, faster. And since torque is our, um, our effort towards getting things to spin, we can say already that a bigger force creates a bigger torque. Now let's go to example two right here. Example two, we can also choose where we're gonna apply that force. We can put our hand really close to the head of the wrench. We can do it midway down the wrench, or we can put our hand all the way at the very end of the wrench. Where would you put your hand on a wrench in order to get the absolute best spin the most torque? I think, I hope you already know the answer to this. You would want it at R3. The further you are away from the end of the wrench uh, or from the, from the pivot point, I guess I should label that right there. The further you are away from your pivot, uh, the, the easier it is to get something to spin. That's why really, really big wrenches exist. They wouldn't put those giant handles on them if they didn't have to. Those giant handles are inconvenient. They get in the way when you want to make it go all the way around. They make them heavier. They make them cost more. The only reason to make a big, long handle on a wrench is because it gives you that mechanical advantage because we can apply more torque if we uh, put it further out. You can even get extreme with this. Uh, back when I used to work in air conditioning, uh, I had a wrench and I had a pipe that fit on the outside of my wrench. And if I really couldn't get something loose with the, with the wrench, I would slip a pipe over the outside and then I could get even further out. And if that didn't work, I probably had already broke, broken the bolt uh, because it was like stuck that hard that it just like snapped something. Uh, okay, the last option is how would you apply the force? If you're pushing on it, do you want to kind of push towards uh, along this angle right there? Uh, that's theta one. Do you want to push straight down or would you push kind of like out towards the edge with theta three? This one's maybe a little bit less intuitive because probably you don't really think as much about the angle that you're pushing. Uh, but we can pro probably make a comparison with the door. When you open a door, what direction do you push on the handle? And the, the honest answer is probably you use theta two. You probably push it straight out. You're not pushing it along, uh, if, if we do a door handle, sorry. Uh, if we do a door handle, you probably don't push it this way. Because if you're pushing it that way, part of your force is opening the door, but part of your force is, is going this way. It's a component that just pushes up against the hinge. And if you went the other way, uh, if you were instead of pushing outwards, uh, then you would have part of your force opening the door, but part of it just trying to like, I don't know, stretch the hinge. That doesn't really make any sense. So it's this perpendicular component that gives us the absolute best torque. So out of these three ideas, we can build an equation for torque. We know that as R increases, the further you are away from your pivot point, the more torque you get. We also know, and this one was very obvious, that the bigger the force is, the more torque you have. The final piece has to do with angle. And I will say, first off, this is usually enough of an equation for us. The angle part comes up rarely, and it's usually very obvious if they're asking you about an angle because they have an angle in there. Otherwise, we just ignore the angle. But if there is an angle in there, we go all the way up to RF sine theta. Uh, and uh, we just uh, plug this in. If it's 90 degrees, sine of theta is one, and that would give us our biggest torque. And anything greater or less than 90 degrees 
as we go this way or we go that way, we'll end up decreasing the sine value and therefore decreasing the torque. The units of torque are Newton times meters. They are Newton meters. Don't confuse them with what we used for energy, Newton meters or joules. This is a Newton times a meter, and we usually put a dot between them just to make it very clear that we're doing a different mathematical process here than we do with uh, Newton meters uh, or with joules when we're doing work. So uh, torque is again this spin that has uh, partly the force that's being applied, but this added idea of the distance it is from the pivot point. And that's the last vocab word that I have to sneak in here. I'm just gonna sneak in the word lever arm. So lever arm is the distance between our, um, our pivot point and where our force is being applied. So don't call this radius, call it the lever arm. Okay, so now I have a problem right here. Uh, it starts here and we'll kind of just sneak it in. Uh, we're gonna look at this problem. We're gonna figure out what the net torque on this system is. You can imagine this is like several stacked wheels that are all glued together or something and the pivot points coming out of the page at you. So this whole thing can turn different ways and you can see that there are forces being applied at different uh, uh, distances. I'm gonna call this force, uh, this first uh, distance, we'll call that uh, the radius R, which means that this must be 2R uh, and this all the way up to there is 3R because you can see that it's three times as far. So if I wanna figure out what the net torque is, that's the sum of all the torques on this system, I'm just going to multiply my R's and my F's but I have to pay attention to the direction that these things are going. If they're going the same direction, they should add together, but something that's going the opposite direction should actually subtract. So I'm gonna start over here uh, on the left-hand side with this force here. Uh, I'm gonna do R times F. So this is two R away times three F. That's my first torque. My next one, that's this guy right here. Uh, he's three F or three R away, you can see that's one, two, three R's away, uh, and the magnitude of the force is F. Uh, my next one's gonna be this one right here. This one's going the opposite direction. You can see that this uh, three F one would spin it that way. This one here would spin it that way, but this two F one is gonna spin it my opposite direction. So I need to subtract that one because it's going the opposite direction. Uh, so this is uh, one R away, that's my lever arm distance, uh, and then two F, is the force. My last one is this one all the way down here, uh, and that is also gonna be spinning that way, which I called my negative direction. So it's a distance of three R uh, and a force of two F. I'm running out of space here. Uh, thank you, Paige, for moving over for me. Uh, okay, so that's all the forces. I've now accounted for every single one. I got that one, I got that one, I got that one, I got that one, there's nothing left. So let me just simplify this and then we can solve. Two times three, that's six RF. Uh, three, this is just uh, plus three RF. Minus, this is gonna be two RF. And then this is three times two again, so minus six RF. My sixes and my sixes cancel. Three minus two, I just end up with RF. So the net torque on this system is whatever R times F is, which isn't given to me. But this is the kind of problem that you're likely to see if you're given a problem that's testing how well you understand torque. You'll see something like this where they just want you to find uh, the net torque and they're just checking to see if you know about signs. And you're good at just keeping track of your R's and your F's and stuff like that. So uh, now you know everything there is to know about torque.